Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about heparin induced thrombocytopenia or HIT. So, hit me with the facts. As you know, if you have problems with your platelets, it's either a problem in platelet number or a problem with platelet function. In heparin induced thrombocytopenia, it's a cytopenia. There is a problem with platelet number, it's low. This is the normal platelet count, this is thrombocytopenia, and this is thrombocytosis. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is a thrombocytopenia with low platelet count. Is it pseudo-thrombocytopenia or is it true thrombocytopenia? It is true. Pseudo-thrombocytopenia is an artifact in the lab when you put the blood in this purple top tube. Purple top tube or lavender top tube contains EDTA. EDTA will lead to platelet agglutination or clumping. These are eight platelets, but they are counted as one by the stupid butt machine called analyzer. That's why we call it analyzer. It's a stupid butt machine. This is not a true thrombocytopenia. This is a pseudo thrombocytopenia. The machine has been fooled. So if the machine counts eight as one, if the patient has a platelet count of 160,000, the machine will count them as 20,000. Thrombocytopenia, is it primary hemostasis problem or a secondary hemostasis? It's a primary hemostasis problem, all of these symptoms. However, don't forget that it's called heparin induced and heparin will destroy your secondary hemostasis. So it could be either. More importantly, the most common symptom in HIT is not bleeding. It's actually thrombosis because anything that can make you clot can make you bleed and vice versa. How do you treat thrombocytopenia? Treat the underlying cause. If it's heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, uh, maybe you should stop heparin? To achieve blood coagulation, we need many steps. Vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis. Heparin will tamper with my secondary hemostasis, and then the thrombocytopenia will affect my primary hemostasis. More importantly, the most common symptom in HIT is not bleeding. It's actually thrombosis. How does heparin work? It stimulates antithrombin-3, and we have talked about this in the previous video. Heparin works by stimulating antithrombin-3. The side of action, blood. Onset is rapid, duration is short, it's always an injection. How do you monitor the unfractionated heparin? PTT. But the PTT cannot monitor the low molecular weight heparin as discussed in the previous video. Here is the unfractionated heparin stimulating antithrombin-3 to inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, add thrombin as well because it's called antithrom. However, low molecular weight heparin only works by inhibiting factor 10 and factor 10 alone. And that's why low molecular weight heparin will not prolong the PTT. Heparin, more correctly, heparins, because we have three subtypes. Mechanism of action, stimulate endothrombin 3, which will inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, add 2 and 7. The most important two here are factor 10, factor 2. Heparin is used as an anticoagulant, especially for angina MI and DVT. Heparin is also found in the green top test tube. Side effects of heparin include bleeding, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, thrombosis, and osteoporosis. And now, on to today's topic, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. First, I will explain it three times. First time is for the amateurs, people who are as naive as the B lymphocyte before it recognizes the antigen. Then the intermediate, and then to the pros. Your professor will tell you everything at once, but not me. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia for beginners. Imagine a patient with DVT. There is a high risk of thrombosis, yeah. So, you gave heparin. Good job. However, most patients will be fine. 2% of the patients will develop thrombocytopenia. The thrombus is getting better. What in the world? I'm giving heparin as an anticoagulant to prevent thrombus formation and the thrombus is getting bigger? Oh yeah. Moreover, this DVT can progress into PE, a pulmonary embolus, after giving heparin? Oh yeah, because HIT is a thrombosis. If you go to the lab, it's called thrombocytopenia, baby. Bladed gout is low. How do I manage heparin-induced thrombocytopenia? It's heparin-induced, so stop the freaking heparin and then give our gastro ban. But I don't understand. How come heparin, the anticoagulant, causes a thrombotic disorder such as HIT? Because anything that makes you clot can make you bleed and vice versa. Does anyone remember DIC? Does anyone remember TTP? Does anyone remember lupus anticoagulant, which is actually procoagulant? Now to the intermediate level. 
clinical significance of the thrombocytopenia. Okay, if your plate count is less than 90,000, your bleeding time will start to increase, but you will have no symptoms. Less than 50,000, here is when you develop a clinical picture. Less than 30,000, spontaneous bleeding. Less than 20,000, severe bleeding. Less than 10,000, transfer or whatever. Less than 5,000, extremely severe bleeding and spontaneous hemorrhage. In heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, you might find symptoms that does not correspond with the platelet count. For example, imagine a patient with a platelet count of 90,000. Oh yeah, you might expect a slight prolongation of the bleeding time. That's it. But in HIT, you'll find a patient with platelet count of 90,000 and spontaneous bruising. Oh, what? Or a patient with platelet count of 55,000 and severe bleeding. What in the world? But remember, the most common symptom in HIT is not bleeding. It is thrombosis. Intermediate level. Remember, heparin. 2% of patients will develop thrombocytopenia. The thrombus is getting bigger. After heparin, yes, the leg swelling is getting worse. Wow, short of breath, there is distress and a pulmonary embolism. And the bleeding symptoms are worse than what would otherwise be expected by looking at the lab results. Plated count is low. Fiber integration plus and dimer is even getting higher, which means the DVT is getting worse. How do you treat it? Stop the heparin and give our gatroban. Look, the name has the answer. Ban, which means an inhibitor of tro thrombin. Thrombin is factor 2A. Argatroban am a thrombin inhibitor. Pharmacology makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Now let me explain HIT at an even higher level for the pros. There are two types of HIT. HIT type 1 and guess what? HIT type 2. Now let's leave the academic world and go to the real clinical world. Imagine that I'm a doctor and this is my medical student. I mean, look at that naivete on his face. Hey doctor, please save us. The patient is having HIT. Ah, uh, as if I care. My big boy, I don't like cliches. Tell me, is this HIT type 1 or HIT type 2? Doctor, it's HIT type 1. I will leave the medical student and go to another room and start to dance, literally dance, because I know this patient will be fine. HIT type 1 is clinically insignificant. Your woke professor with his theories might care about, but for clinical purposes in the real world, we don't give a rip. So that was HIT type 1. But imagine another story. The medical student came to Hey, doctor, please save us. The patient is having hit. What type of hit? It's hit type 2. I will leave the medical student. I'll leave the patient. I'll go to another room. I'll start to cry, weep, and sprinkle some particles of dust on my head. Because hit type 2 is serious. The mortality rate might approach 20%. There is 1 in a 5 chance that this patient is going to die. I can feel malpractice lawyers up my pants. I can see my name in the newspaper tomorrow and on CNN tonight. And you'll see my pictures of law enforcement taking pictures of me with a name and a number like the coagulation factors. Mug shots are anteroposterior and lateral. We better act before it's too late. The patient's gonna die. So I rushed to the patient's room. The leg swelling is worsening. The thrombus is getting bigger. Shorts of breath is getting worse. Tachycardia, tachypnea, increased respiratory distress. Breath sounds are decreasing. We did a CT pulmonary angiogram and found a pulmonary embolus even after giving heparin. And the plated count is dropping like a rock. This is where Chevrolet got their motto from. Like a rock. Because their price value decreases like a rock. Toyota is better. Anyway. So, we order an ELISA IgG against PF4. This test is sensitive but not specific. The very specific test is the serotonin release assay. Increased release of serotonin means the platelets have been activated because serotonin is part of the platelet contents. Remember that thrombosis, not bleeding, is the major complication of HIT type 2. HIT type 1 is insignificant. Then the medical student started to become more sophisticated to the point of being stupid and said, Doctor, why don't you give warfarin? Shut up. If a student says this in the real world, I'll kick his nuts, metaphorically speaking, because we don't have enough time. But since this is a lecture, let me tell you about warfarin-induced skin necrosis. Warfarin, as you know, inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, protein S, and protein Z. However, warfarin inhibits protein C and protein S before it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. It inhibits the anticoagulants before it inhibits the procoagulants. When you inhibit the breaks of coagulation first, you get more coagulation. So in the beginning, 
beginning, warfarin can lead to actually thrombosis, believe it or not. It's called warfarin induced skin necrosis or skin thrombosis. If you already have thrombocytopenia, you're more liable to skin necrosis on warfarin because the thrombocytopenia means hit is still there. Also, if you remember my previous lectures when we have talked about the heparin bridge, why do we do the heparin bridge? Why not just give warfarin? Because warfarin is a slow acting drug. It starts acting here. But the patient can die here from thrombosis. So in the beginning, warfarin is pro-thrombosis. And then after this, it's an anticoagulant. And this will take so much time. And the patient is having a pulmonary embolus right now. That's why the medical student is, is stupid. So, warfarin will take a long time in order to work. Even if the student was so lucky and warfarin started working earlier, the patient has low platelets. He will bleed to death. Well done, student. Well done. Now, why is the nurse giving me that look? So, one of the tests for HIT is platelet factor 4. Let me tell you about the platelets. The platelets have plasma membrane and a freaking cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of the platelets contain granules. We have alpha granules and dense granules. Alpha granules include platelet factor 4 in, involved in HIT. Dense granules include serotonin and these are the two tests for HIT. You can do the IgG against platelet factor 4 or you can do the serotonin release assay. If you found tons of serotonin being released, it means these platelets have been overactivated by the crazy heparin. And when the platelets get overactivated, you get thrombosis, baby. Subtypes of HIT. We have HIT type 1 and HIT type 2. Type 1 is clinically insignificant. Type 2 is clinically significant. Type 1 is non-immune. Type 2 is immune. Indeed, we have the IgG, O2 antibodies against heparin platelet factor 4 complex. Type 1, platelet count normalize after 2 days. But in type 2, platelet count will not normalize on their own after 2 days. Here, you should do what? Nothing! But here, you should stop the heparin and hit me with Argetroban. Pathophysiology of HIT or how the flip did it happen? You gave heparin. Heparin will interact with platelet factor 4 in some patients, about 2% or 1 to 5%. Forming the heparin platelet factor 4 complex, as you know, platelet factor 4 is part of the granules. After this, this complex is foreign to our body. It will get recognized by your immune system, specifically IgG. Those are IgG O2 antibodies against heparin platelet factor 4 complex. In other words, HIT type 2 is an O2 immune disease. And then the platelets will go insane. They will start to aggregate. After this, the fibrin will become fibrin and you get thrombosis. When will the thrombosis happen? It depends. If you have no previous heparin exposure, the thrombus will happen in 5 to 10 days after heparin injection. But if you have received heparin before, the thrombosis will happen at the same freaking day, such as what happens with our patient with DVT. Like swelling is getting worse, thrombus is getting bigger, shorts of breath, distress, breath sounds are declining, there is an embolus, plate count is decreasing. Screening test, ELISA, IgG against plate factor 4. Confirmatory test, serotonin release assay. Increased serotonin release means there is plate aggravation, which means there is thrombosis. So the patient had DVT and no PE. Heparin cannot work because it caused hit, so I cannot give heparin. And the doctor told me, do not give warfarin, it will make things worse. What should I do then? What anticoagulant should I use to stop the thrombosis? Give me Argetroban, a direct thrombin inhibitor. Now, there are two methodologies to diagnose HIT. The first one is called the four T's. T is their thrombocytopenia. T, the timing. When did the thrombocytopenia start? T, thrombosis. Did you find a thrombus? And the last T, are there any alternative causes of the thrombocytopenia? And then they will give you a score. The score will tell you whether HIT has a high probability, intermediate probability, or low probability. There is another method called the HIT expert probability score. It's based upon the plate count, the timing, the thrombosis, the skin necrosis, the acute systemic reaction, etc. If you are a medical student just getting started, you do not need to know this. But if you are a resident or, God forbid, an emergency doctor, of course you need to know all of this or I'll smack your butt, metaphorically speaking. We have talked about the three types of heparin before. Remember, unfractionated heparin has a very high risk of hit. The low molecular weight heparin has a lower risk of hit. Still has a risk, but it's low. How about fondaparinox? Safer in hit, but it's not 0% risk. There is some risk. So, th this patient developed hit due to unfractionated heparin. Can I just switch to low molecular weight heparin? Shut up! No, because the risk is still there. It's still a heparin. There is cross-reactivity between that heparin and the platelet factor 4. And this cross-reactivity can 
also happen with the low molecular weight heparin. So what should I do? Stop all heparins and hit me with ergatroban. Now this is for the professionals. Etiology of HIT immunological, specifically IgG02 antibodies against heparin plate factor 4 complex clinically thrombosis is way commoner than bleeding. Diagnosis, plate count is low and decreasing. ELISA positive 4 IgG against plate factor 4. The best test or the most specific test is the serotonin release assay. Increased release of serotonin means there is plated activation, which means there is thrombosis. Treatment of HIT, stop the heparin because this is heparin induced. And then give a direct thrombin inhibitor such as ergetiroban or lupiridine. Who named these things? Do not switch to low molecular weight heparin. Do not give warfarin until the plate count normalizes, which means the HIT has disappeared and has been cured. Do not give platelets unless there is severe life-threatening bleeding. And this is the same concept as with HUS and TTP. Oh, the patient is having thrombocytopenia. Let me give you some platelets. Shut up! If you give the patients more platelets, you will find more platelet factor for heparin complex worsening the problem, doofus. Picmonic time. This is heparin. Remember the happy heron and one of the side effects was hit heparin induced thrombocytopenia now let's talk about hit when does it happen five to ten days after heparin injection but if the patient has been exposed to heparin previously hit might happen in the same day what's going on you have antibodies against platelet factor four here is a plate and here is four this will cause platelet aggregation aggregation of plates and bleeding and more importantly thrombosis how do you diagnose HIT with the serotonin release assay? Look at the serotonin, the 5-HT, the 5-hydroxytryptamine. How do you treat it? You stop something and you start something else. You stop the heparin and you start argatroban, the arrogant trombone man. These previous two slides were from Picmonics. These are video animated mnemonics and they have more than 1400 of them. If you go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. Okay, medicosis, just tell me what would you do? Okay, I'll snatch the lab results from my medical student. Plate counts are low. ELISA is positive for IgG against plate factor 4. The serotonin release assay is increased and I found a thrombus on CT pulmonary angiogram. So, I'll tell my nurse, please stop the heparin and hit me with argatroban, no pun intended. But doctor, I don't have argatroban. Hit me with lupiridine. Some pearls for the pros. Suspect HIT type 2 in any hospitalized patient who present with a clot one to two weeks after hospitalization or on the same day if previously exposed to heparin, even if platelet count is normal. Wow! In a patient with HIT type 2, when is the highest risk of thrombosis? Actually, this happens when the platelet count rises back to normal. What the what? I mean, think about it. When platelet counts increase back to normal, there is an increased risk of thrombosis. These are the thrombocytes, for heaven's sakes. Now, if your professor has told you this, I'll retire from YouTube and work for a garbage company. Do not switch from unfractionated heparin to low molecular weight heparin. Argetroban can artificially elevate the PTINR, and the INR could be greater than 4. Don't panic. This is expected. Do not give warfarin to hit until the plate count normalizes. It will make things worse. Do not give platelets to patients with HIT, TTP, or HUS unless there is life-threatening bleeding. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course and my cardiac pharmacology course and my 50 cases on bleeding and coagulation disorders. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.